In this video, I wanted to talk about my DIY solar generator I've been using for a couple of months now. It's a, it's a 12 volt system. It has 100, 200, amp, 200 amp hours uh, of capac storage capacity. It's a 2000 watt inverter, uh, 40 amp charge controller. I'm going, in this video, I'm going to cover every step, every piece, all the way through the system, including the solar panels, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Okay, first we'll start with the batteries. I have two Power Queen 12 volt batteries. They're each 100 amp hours uh, for a total of 100, uh, 200 amp hours or 2560 watt hours. Uh, each battery, the, uh, I'm sorry, these batteries are actually wired in parallel. That means that the voltage stays the same at 12 volts, but the amps go up. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries. Um, if you were to open this battery up, and look inside, you would see, you would see uh, solar uh, battery cells inside, and then a little computer board, and some wires. And the little computer board is called a BMS, a battery management system. And that battery management system uh, helps control and protect the battery from overcharging or over discharging, uh, different things it protects against. The, if you see the two wires here running between the batteries themselves, connecting them in parallel. Uh, I used a six AWG or American wire gauge, um, so six gauge wire. That was according to uh, the the Power Queen owner's manual. Let's see if I can get this in here. So right here it says in between the batteries to use six gauge wire. So that's what I used. Uh, and then now a very very important thing, one of the, probably the most important wire in one of these setups is the wire that runs between the batteries and the inverter. In that case, I used a one aught size gauge wire. So this is one aught negative coming to the battery. And we have one aught running all the way through all these components into the inverter. That's very important. To determine the wire size here, uh, you have to take the wattage of the inverter, which is 2000, and divide by 12, which comes out to be 166. So the, the total, the, the max amps on this, it could actually go over a little bit, but is 166. So you need a wire that can handle at least 166 and more. So uh, I, I ordered Windy, Windy Nation uh, battery cable and, and welding cable. And it, this one out wire says it will handle up to 200, and I believe it said 83, 283, I believe, amps. So that's plenty of. Um, that's plenty of space there to, to not overheat the wire. That's what you're trying to do here. You want to make sure that if you're pulling 2000 watts out of the uh, inverter, that you're not overloading the wire. If you do that, it'll get hot and it could catch fire. You'll see a lot of battery ampacity charts out there and they're all, it seems like they're all different. So I try to go by the manufacturer's website of the wire I'm using. So if you were to find an ampacity, ampacity chart out there, you might find a different value for this one out wire. But in this case, it says it goes up to 283 and that's what I'm going with. I have ran a load test on this system for about five minutes. Uh, I ran it up to about 2000 watts. Then I use an infrared thermometer to go around and check all the wires, all the connections, every piece of the system. And it, did not get very hot. I think I got up to around a little over 100 after running for five minutes, and that's a acceptable range. What I want to talk about is the fuse. This is an ANL fuse down here. It's it needs to be the closest thing to the battery, which it is in this case, and it protects the wire from the battery all the way to the inverter. All the power that goes through, and also the power that comes from the charge solar charge controller down to charge the battery. ANL fuses are good to I believe up to 30 volts so on a 12 volt or 24 volt you could use these fuses but anything above 30 volts so basically 36 or 48 volts you'd want to use a uh, class T fuse or a mega fuse. Now you could use class T fuse or mega fuse here too but I use in this case I just used the, the ANL fuse. The thing I learned while putting this together and testing it is that you don't want to buy cheap fuses or cheap fuse holders. I first bought some really cheap fuses and when I was load testing I noticed that the wires were getting very hot and when I moved up to a more expensive fuse 
it stopped getting hot. Actually, one of the cheap fuses I actually burned through. If you can see that, I don't know, it burned through the, the middle there. That's the cheap fuse. So, lesson learned don't get cheap fuses. The fuse that I have in there currently is a 250 amp fuse. And if you remember, the wire is rated up to 283. So, that fuse will be sufficient for my use here and safe. Next thing I'll talk about is the battery switch or oscillator switch, if you want to call it. That cuts off the power to and from the battery, and it's second after the, the fuse there. And so if you're working on your system and you need to turn off power to the battery to, to make things safe so you can work on things, that's what, that's what that battery switch is for. Uh, the, this one is good from 12 to 48 volts uh, and up to 275 amps. And just above the battery switch is a bus bar. There's a positive and negative one. I'll take off these things so you can see under it. It's a four stud bus bar. Whoops, I have to get that later. And the purpose of this is just to allow you to easily hook things up together. If I didn't have the bus bar, I'd have to stack all these different things all together on that one stud. And I didn't want to do that, so I got a bus bar. Also got a negative one right down there. So on this one here, I have the wire coming from the solar charge controller down to the bus bar. Then, of course, the battery switch uh, up to up to the bus bar, and the go to the inverter, and then the battery shunt, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. I have it powered through there as well. This bus bar is rated up to 250 amps, so that's acceptable. So now we'll talk about the inverter. This is a Gindel, Gindel, I'm not sure how to say it. It's a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, over on this side we have just the battery terminals, positive and negative, that runs to the battery through the bus bar. And then on this side we have uh, I'll talk, uh, two AC outlets, uh, two USB-A ports, and a remote port. And that remote port allows you to run a cable to, a, there's a remote switch you can turn the inverter on and off. Now up here above, I have hard wire terminals, and it's got a cover here. And then I'm running eight gauge residential wire here up to the L1430R outlet. And I have that outlet here to so because I have a uh, I have an RV cord here that goes over to my uh, my switch, my uh, power transfer switch, which I've done a whole video on, and I'll put the link below. And uh, so this is, I run that over there and it powers like four circuits in my house uh, that I have running almost all the time. And um, I power my upstairs lights, downstairs lights. I can power up to 10 circuits I have in that transfer switch. And down below the inverter, I have, of course, a negative bus bar I talked about earlier. And again, the one cable running all through, all the way back to the battery. And this actually is a battery shunt. It's a Victron uh, battery sh shunt that tells me the it basically measures all the amps going in and out of the battery and it tells me through Bluetooth app that they have uh, I can see the state of charge how much how much power is going into the battery or coming out of the battery uh, very useful uh, this one here doesn't have a physical display on the outside to tell me the battery percentage I've decided to just go with the this Victron smart uh, smart uh, shunt here that does not have that but I can see it all wherever I'm at my, my house most places in my house anyway I can check and see how the battery is doing. And then of course from the shunt, it runs down to the negative on this battery. I didn't mention it earlier, I don't think, but you have the negative on one battery and the positive on another battery. Now if you had three, you would put this one on the third battery, negative, and connect all three batteries with these wires. And on the far battery, you would take the positive. So however you, however you put together is, is how you would wire this in parallel. Now, you follow, follow the, the uh, manufacturer's instructions on how to do this for each battery. Some, some, some only allow four of these to be hooked up in parallel and then four in series, so be sure to read the instructions on the manual. So now I'll talk about my MPPT solar charge controller. It's a solar charge controller. It's a Bouge RV, like I said, which stands for maximum power point tracking. Uh, I did another video that I talk about the inverter, the solar charge controller, and the batteries, and uh, I'll put a link down below to that too. I talk more in detail of what they're for. If you're not familiar with all these parts so the solar wire 
comes in from the solar panels outside and it goes through this little 20 amp breaker. I have this breaker here so I can turn solar power on and off. If you see there's an indicator there for there's PV power, that's uh, photovoltaic, photovoltaic. If I turn that off, you'll see that'll go off here in just a second. That means there's no more, there's no more power coming in from the solar panels. Turn it back on and it'll, it'll kick back on. So when you're doing work on your system, uh, you would want to turn off the, if you're going to work on your system, you would turn off the battery switch. Or actually, you turn this off first. This is the first thing you want to turn off. You don't want to ever be powering your solar charge controller from solar if it's not connected to the battery. So the first thing you would do is turn off this uh, breaker here, and then you can turn off the battery switch next. So this protects, uh, you know, some kind of short or something in a system that should flip this breaker to to protect against that. And so this is 8-gauge PV wire. I have 70 feet I had to run to my solar panels, so I chose to go with 8-gauge wire, which will help in uh, uh, power loss. I don't want to have much power loss, so I used a, a, a bigger gauge. And that runs into the input here of the PV wire. And then it does its thing, which I talk about in the other video, to charge the battery. And out, out comes the 6-gauge uh, wire to the bus bar. Uh, well, the negative goes down to the bus bar, negative bus bar, but the positive goes up to this little uh, breaker here. And this breaker is a 40 amp breaker. This is a 40 amp uh, charge controller. So if it goes over that, it'll set off that breaker. And again, I could use that to, you know, if I wanted to work on something, I can also turn that on and off. Uh, I'll set it and then flip back on, switch, switch it back up. So when that runs down to the bus bar and then goes down and charges the battery. I forgot to mention the, the Bouge RV MPPT solar charge controller comes with a mobile app. It's been like two years since it was updated, but it just got updated the other day and it's nicer looking. I, I like the, the way it looks now. I believe that covers everything inside. So now I'll take you outside to the solar panels and show you what's out there. So they, these are my four 200 watt Bouge RV solar panels. <clears throat> they can produce up to 800 watts. The, the charge controller inside will only accept up to 600 at 12 volt, but I'm getting ready to move up to a 24 volt system. I'll make a video on that. I did a whole video on this little mobile array I have here. Like I mentioned, you, I did a whole video on this little mobile solar panel array I have here, and you can go watch that. I'll put the link to that below. But to quick summarize, I have the wires running underground here, up under the porch, over to the, and goes into the garage. And from the conduit runs, I have the wire going into the house here through this little uh, weatherproof port. Guys, that'll do it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed me covering the 12 volt system I've been using for a couple of months. I will be moving 20, for a 24 volt system coming up soon. I'll make a video on that. Uh, I believe everything I've done here is safe. If, if you see anything that is unsafe, please let me know. Actually, I showed a preview shot of this before I filmed this video. And someone told me I needed to have the, the uh, fuse block before the switch. I need to have it closest to the battery. So I did make that change to make this safer. So if I've done anything, let me know. I'll fix it. I may make a follow-up video if it's important enough. So thanks for watching.